do you can't put children who are alleged abused and neglected on a waiting list. You must deal with this right away. And we get over 15,000 calls a year uh, to do allegations of abuse and neglect. And they're coming 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you have to be able to try to keep up with the volume of what's coming in, and you have to do a thorough assessment so you can make a good decision whether you should go out on the investigation or not. We decided to use predictive analytics as a part of a long road that we've been going through. Um, we started back in the 90s uh, and trying to figure out what data we could get. The Allegheny Family Screening Tool really helps workers to synthesize uh, the information to help to make decisions quicker. And for each call, we receive a great deal of information from the callers and about the families. And once they have all of that information entered into the system, they make an initial risk and safety rating on the family based on their clinical judgment of what's happening in the home at the time of the call. And then they, after they've done that, they can access the family screening score. This tool helps our workers to use their resources more efficiently, and it helps to identify, you know, who are the cases that we really should be looking at. I think it's a big help. It keeps kids safer. Uh, it may protect uh, kids from being abused, neglected, and, 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 um, and ultimately uh, prevent child deaths. I mean, it's not the answer. It's just a tool in what's being done. It doesn't drive everything, but it helps to improve. And if you can help to improve in this business, that's what we should be doing. We're looking at data a little bit differently than they are in Allegheny County. We're doing analytics in a way that is helping to inform how we match services, how we use resources, and how we do quality assurance on existing cases. We're now using an algorithm to help us understand the level of need of the families served by each of our preventive provider programs. So we know which of our providers are serving families with low service needs and which are serving families with very high service needs. And that helps us plan, it helps us look at where programs need to be located, and it helps us understand, ideally, how to match families to services. Well, it's people. For us, it's people. Um, there are advocates that will definitely say that we're making decisions or could possibly make decisions just based upon numbers. But I believe that uh, in order for data to become important for the staff, we have to make it live for them. It's not about just giving them numbers. They need to know exactly what those numbers mean. So if you're able to find a way to transform the numbers into something that they can put their hands on and be able to feel and touch and communicate, then the data does its work. We can't control the economy of the city, we can't control poverty in New York, but we can find ways to apply the resources, the limited resources of our system in the most effective way possible. That's what all this is about. It's very important because the community in the past, they view us as, you know, really not helping families. And they view us as, you know, back when, you know, we just come and disrupt families and we're not really doing things to really help families move forward. When we're showing them the data, we're showing them data that, you know, this is, this is what we're seeing, this is what we did last year, this is where we're at this year, we're making small strides but we're moving in the right direction, they could appreciate that more and they'll say, okay, ACS is trying to make difference in the communities. I don't think there's any system more complex than a child welfare system. We're talking about the complexities of every single family. You can never do this work without really sound, good human judgment. So all the data that we're doing is all there to inform human judgment and human decision making. You really have to engage the people you're serving so they know what's up and they buy in, you know, and they understand the rationale for it and everything else and, and there's consensus around that in your community. What I tell folks all the time is you have to do the public work. You have to deal with the community. You have to do that. You have to get your buy-in. The technical stuff is secondary. You can get easy enough to do, you know, to, to do the algorithms, but implementation is the critical thing. Ultimately, these are all about families and children, so you can't lose sight of who this data represents. Um, all this data is useful only if you recognize the fact that every child and every family is completely unique. And we're talking about averages and possibilities here. But 
all of those averages and possibilities can be better and more useful than gut instinct or gut intuition. So we want people to understand how to use data to inform their work.